Hey everybody, uh, I want to welcome you to a series of videos, short videos that I'm going to be putting together that are going to assist you in the projects as we move through our trimester. Now, one of the philosophy things I talked about earlier was idea generation. And you may already do a lot of these things, but we're going to put some names to them today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share one of my favorite books that I just found in the last two years. It's called Launching the Imagination by Mary Stewart. It's a comprehensive guide to basic design. And there's a specific chapter in here that I've bookmarked called Chapter 6 called Problem Seeking and Problem Solving. And I have a whole PDF that I may throw on to Schoology. I'm not expecting you to read the whole thing, but there's a couple really key points. And we talked about the creative process and the steps that we go through to do that. So I thought I would share a couple of things from this to get us started in generating some of our own ideas. So the first things, um, we're gonna skip ahead. And you can see they talk about different sources of ideas and different things. But one I wanted to point out is right up here where it says convergent and divergent thinking. We had talked about a little bit about divergent thinking, but let's get into convergent thinking first. And I'm reading exactly what it says here is convergent thinking involves the pursuit of a predetermined goal, usually a linear progression and using a highly focused problem solving technique. The word pros can help you remember the basic steps. Define the problem, do the research, determine your objective, devise a strategy, execute the strategy, and evaluate the results. Now that sounds a lot like our creative process and there's some similarities there. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the next one. Now there's all these different steps and we talked about more on divergent thinking. Now the advantages of convergent thinking, and I'm reading right here, are clarity, control, focus, and a strong sense of direction. For many tasks, convergent thinking is ideal. In some cases, however, convergent thinking causes too much clarity and not enough chaos. So in divergent thinking, the means determines the end. The process is more open-ended, specific results are hard to predict, and divergent thinking is a great way to generate completely new ideas. So we talked a little bit about divergent thinking as the problem definition is elusive or evolving. A rational solution is not required a methodical approach is unnecessary, and deadlines are flexible. Now, we are gonna talk a little bit about divergent thinking today as we do some brainstorming. Now, you've probably done this before, but these are a few key points uh, that I wanna hit on. Now, brainstorming is a super important part, and you probably do this already, but there's even a little bit more that we could do. Now, I always start with making lists using a thesaurus, and this one specifically is what we're gonna talk about today, exploring connections. And there's some other things on the other side. Oh, look, keep a journal, collaborative creativity. So we're gonna go back, and I'm gonna actually shut this, but I wanna just pause right there and take a look at that. That, my friends, is called A mind map or some of you might know that as a concept map the idea is we have a central theme and then from that there goes all the other little seedlings of that idea so I was thinking about today and well actually I'm filming this on Sunday night so we had a little bit of snow today and it's supposed to be spring so spring is gonna go in the middle now, for my introductory pottery courses, you're going to be working on coming up with some ideas for a theme, and I would really like for you to do this and to take a picture of your idea. For my studio clay classes, there's going to be applications of this, and for my studio drawing and painting, this is where it's going to figure into your mini concentration. So, we'll just do a really simple one for spring, and this is where I tend to really enjoy the visual. 
And I'm gonna draw a bunch and I'm gonna try to fill them as quickly as I can. So, spring. Well, one thing I've been seeing a lot are flowers. We get a lot of rain. So this is kind of like a, a list, but it helps us break things up a little bit. Spring, um, sometimes we think about sports starting. Not right now, but sometimes. Um, what else happens in spring? Well, sometimes we, for, for me, I see a lot more like running. We see um, the sun finally comes out. If I think about it, it is the season. I'm kind of describing that word. I'm trying to think really loosely. Um, so you got flowers, I've got sun. I've got my running. You know what, I'm gonna leave it right there. And now from here, what I can do is I can go off of here. And I can create other little subcategories. Oh, you know what I was going to write? His garden. We started some seeds. And so we're starting our garden a little bit. So rain. You know what they say? Rain. Uh, April showers. May flowers. I think about how green the grass gets. For sports, I think about baseball, opening day. I think about all those wonderful, even like the masters, the golf, watching their Running, I think about getting out on the trails now that they're not so wet. Sometimes the sun, it can look cold, but feel warm. Now I might start thinking of other specific things, like maybe for flowers, I think of tulips because they come up even in the snow sometimes. Um, gardens, I think about starting seeds. And you know what, I'm, these terms right here and here, I always tend to leave empty spaces too. And one of the reasons why I leave empty spaces is because ideas can come back to me at other times. So this is an example of the starting of a mind map. And I know it's not super beautiful, but the idea is simple. I'm leaving open, um, I'm coming up with a central idea, and then I'm going down into other little chunks of that. And I can get even more and more specific depending on what I'm looking for. So this is a little introduction to a mind or concept map. Uh, I'm gonna refer to this later. So this video is gonna be here waiting for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have some questions, let me know.